They say it's a matter of time A thousand days and the sun won't shine Before I come back to you When I'm happy Nothing's going to stop me I'm making my way home I'm making my way For your love I will go far I wanna be a river long, the best right in a million wrongs, I know I'm coming back to you, and I'm happy, nothing's going to stop me, I'm making my way home, I'm making my way, I go solo, oh I go solo, I'm making my way. I'm making my way
All right. <laughs> I feel like a radio talk show host these days. Uh, I've been trying to do the live uh, coffee show uh, at least uh, uh, one a day, one a day until I get busy, which will be in a couple of days. Uh, once I start working, then uh, of course I won't be able to do this. Um, been getting a lot of good feedback, so uh, yeah, let's continue this on. So today is a uh, continuation of this incredible uh, surgeon, Dr. Uh, Yongjin Kim. And <clears throat> uh, yesterday we saw his surgery. Uh, he was doing the anterior case uh, guided surgery. But so those of you missed out uh, on the uh, previous uh, uh, episode, which was episode uh, five, today's a six. So uh, if that was the case, then uh, please do check it out. Now, before I start, uh, can you just shout out and make sure that uh, you guys can hear me okay? Uh, if the sound is too low or uh, if the sound is okay, just let me know, all right? So that I can make a necessary adjustment as needed, okay? So, uh, but that Jeff Dan is, has joined us. I got six people in a live room. But I don't know who they are. So if you can shout out, and uh, like always, uh, the city that you are joining from, and also the local time, so that I can uh, use those information for analytics. Okay. All right. So today is going to be a little bit different. Uh, the first uh, 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 first couple, last couple of surgery that was done by Dr. PKB, uh, the CEO of Megagen, who's also a, a periodontist, a prolific implant surgeon. Uh, and also uh, yesterday, Dr. Yongjin Kim from Ilsan, South Korea, very well-known uh, implantologist as well. They both showcased their uh, GBR, uh, no, sorry, guided cases, right? So today is totally not guided. Okay, it's all free-handed, and I think this is also uh, showcases, you know, other skill of Dr. Yongjin Kim. So uh, we're gonna start, and uh, I'm excited to uh, uh, see this. Uh, a surgery as well so first of all before I start I do want to thank I do want to thank uh, uh, June and Minek of Megajan for providing uh, these uh, uh, videos for us to uh, enjoy and also learn from okay all right so let's start Okay, so how's the, the sound? The volume okay, guys? All okay? Hopefully. I know Marco, my timer's kind of all screwed up. This is a one man show, so uh Alright, but the sound is okay Marco. Hello Dr. Yum, how are you? Haven't seen you for a long time. Happy New Year. Alright. Okay. All right, awesome. So everybody can hear okay? Yeah, so it's just going to a countdown for two minutes and the video will start. So today's title is Implant Placement in Maxilla with Osteodensification and GBR. Looks like a full arch to me here. Hey sang Dr. Ham, how are you? Hey Anis, you guys are becoming a regular. <laughs> today's surgery is going to be a little bit of a long one. I think a little, almost a 40 minutes to an hour. 
Yes, yeah, so non edited surgery. This was uh, October 21st uh, uh, this, uh, this year. So the surgery is non edited. Uh, so about an hour. Of course, it was uh, uh, live aired in South Korea. So a lot of us in Canada and North America and US, uh, we missed out on it, right? So, um, you know, it's good that uh, we get to uh, sit together. So I think he's going to probably place some implants at the front and implants of the quad two. Um, I don't know what the story is. There's already four implants on the quad one and there's a one lone standing implant on the uh, two seven almost area. And there's a two eight wisdom two still hanging in there. So I don't know what the, the definitive prosthetic plan is. So Dr. Kim will probably explain that before he starts. Okay. Now, if you guys have any question, right, just a, a message uh, on the board, and I'll try to cover that. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Blue diamond. Briefly explain my surgery plan. This patient is a 54 years old male patient 54? with diabetes mellitus. Glucosylated hemoglobin index called the HbA1c was around 7.4. When this in index is greater than 6.0, DM controllability is not so good. So aggressive procedure is not recommended. Mm. So I placed the implant in completely healed site and extraction was done. Okay, so it's one of those uh, uh, early delayed stage again. As, as shown in this photo, remaining upper teeth had severe mobility and labiovasion. These photos are lateral view. Mm -hmm. Because of severe horizontal resection in upper anterior side, this patient was presenting class 3 occlusal tendency. Okay. This is occlusal view. Yeah. It's a class okay, 1, so but what he's saying is that because of severe resorption, side side the sclerally is presenting as a almost like a, you know, pseudo class 3. three months ago. This is panorama of the implant placement. This is my life surgery plan. Four blue diamond implant will be placed in left upper central inside so okay yesterday those of you joined me yesterday he used the implant any one implant and he did a guided surgery and he did the uh, immediate loading with a uh, custom uh, zirconia uh, abutment and did a pmma pre-milled um, temporary uh, uh, prosthetic right he used any one uh, he is using a different implant system he calls it a blue diamond okay blue diamond I believe I could be wrong he's referring to a proper um, the uh, name of the, the the lineup was the uh, any rich octa any rich octa but recently I think they basically started to name it as a blue diamond blue I can understand because it's a blue coating Diamond, I'm not sure what the diamond is for. Maybe it is one of those uh, the titanium with the zirconia uh, uh, impregnated in there, you know, just like uh, what is that, uh, uh, the st uh, stramen. Maybe it gives extra strength. What happened? Okay. Scared me right there. Okay. My life surgery now. So he's doing a crystal incision, the typical mid crest. Remaining periodontally compromised, the remaining teeth were extracted three months ago. Oh, okay. So that's so why... Gingiva healing is quite promising, but bone mm. healing is not so good. Mm. 
남아있었던 안 좋은 체조적으로 안 좋은 체아들의 발신에 수행을 했습니다. So, uh, 일반의 힐링이 잘 됐지만 플레이트의 힐링은 썩 좋지 않습니다. They did extraction but no bone grafting at all at that time. And then uh, today He's going to do a full thickness and expose the area, I think, and uh, he's going to have to do some grafting at the same time. And what you will, the take home today, I think, uh, you know, if you really want to optimize the learning uh, experience today, is focus on the detail, right? Uh, Dr. Yongjin Kim, uh, you know, he's a young young surgeon, well, not that young. But he's a lot of experience and his uh, technique, his mechanics is very, very sound. Uh, he's got very good fundamentals of a surgical skill. He's a flap design, uh, actual act of flapping, right? Yeah. So, you know, pay attention to that. Yeah, he's using uh, a typical uh, number nine uh, Perios elevator, looks like. Okay. Whenever you are flapping with an expectation of doing a GBR together, it's very, very important that you do a full thickness. Okay. Now, she's got a, a lot of a deficiency on the buckle. Full operative CVCT. The entire labial bone plate was gone. Yeah, labial plate is gone. Straight hand to PC, But seems like his palate is still there, so. You know, so now I'm removing the granulation teeth, teeth from the extraction side. Hey, Ayman. How you doing? Hey, Eric. How you guys doing? So what, what, what you'll notice in a case like this, it happens to me too, it takes me longer to do a f proper flab and clean up than the actual implant placement. Um, you know, out of all the steps that, that I do in my own surgery, implant placement is probably the shortest time. Uh, where, you know, I tend to spend a lot of time, it's just like where Dr. Kim is showing, is raising a proper planned flap okay. yeah that's pretty good that's uh that's that's what makes it makes it break it it's not really the buckle plate and a lot of people say if you don't have a buckle plate then you know it's, it's hard to do a, a predictable work um buckle plate you know what if you have a good uh fundamental surgical skill and if you understand the concept of a craft envelope buckle plate even though it's gone like this it's still doable but you want to have a good palatal plate okay. if I had to choose between buckle plate and a palatal plate I'd rather have a palatal plate and missing buckle plate okay. So what he's making a comment is that uh, it's good to see that this palatal bone is still being maintained. And oftentimes it's the case because palatal bone, palatal plate is much thicker than buccal plate. When you lose a tooth, even due to a big infection, palatal plate is oftentimes the last one to go. Okay, last one to go. Buccal goes first into proximal and then last will be palate. Caramel popcorn. Very good. Mmm. That's the previous implant that he, they placed. I will use this implant as a reference for implant positioning. The implant is 3 So he's going to use that as a reference point to place the rest of the implant. So provided that that implant is it the right position. So he's going to do a little bit of av alveoloplasty. He's just going to flatten out a little bit so that he can get a landing pad. Okay. He's not reducing enough to get a proper width of the 
of the ridge to place an implant because obviously he doesn't have enough bone but he's, he's uh, removing enough bone so that first of all you want to get rid of all the fibrous tissue because okay, he wants to do a GBR so you know, with that in mind you don't want to have any soft tissue tags in between the recipient bone and the grafting bone okay. you can use a carbide burr, straight hand piece, surgical hand piece diamond it doesn't matter okay, you want to clean all that up and using the burr is the quickest way to do so yeah so he's saying that he typically likes to use a carbide burr to get the gross reduction of the tissue uh, tags and all that cleaned out Oh, is he doing a parasitic release right away? What is doing? Oh, he's removing something. I think there's a little metal. What is that? Anybody? Anybody know what he's trying to remove? He was, he was pulling on something, or is he just doing parasitic release right now? Hey Justin, how are you? If you guys can do a shout out, your city and uh, your local time, uh, local time, that'd be good. can't be a bone tack because they didn't do any uh, bone, uh, bone augmentation when they you know did the extraction a few months ago maybe from previous like extraction maybe there was some remnant that got stuck in the tissue maybe just cleaning that up yeah he got something so first, I will place one implant in the central incise area. So he's eyeballing everything, eh? Yeah. And I tell you, Korean uh, surgeons are some, some of the best uh, freehand surgeons uh, uh, in the world. <laughs> She's using Lindemann, side cutting. Because he wants to approximate to the palatal bone as closely adapted as possible. So, whether there is a buccal plate or not, you, got, you gotta uh, do osteotomy with the intention of a buccal jump gap, right? So, he wants to. Oh, he's using a densa burr in a reverse right off the bat. So, what does that tell us? It's telling us that the bone quality is pretty bad. Now it's going to use the 3.3. This is the tensor for Oseo densification. So basal bone quality is not so good, so I decided to increase the bone density by using this tensor ball in counterclockwise motion. So he's using counterclockwise, so he's already uh, uh, densing, densifying. And obviously, uh, when you're doing uh, in a reverse, you want to use a copious amount of water, which he is doing right now. Okay. Hey, Robert, how you doing? Thanks for joining. So he's going to place 11.5. So what he's saying is that a, um, a typical uh, telltale sign of osteodensification uh, drill after the osteotomy as you can see right here because it's almost like a burnishing effect to the surrounding bone laterally you'll see oftentimes this a uh, white look white look of the ring uh, surrounding it blue diamond 
So it's a 4.1 by 11.5 blue diamond, which is an octa connection. Octa connection of this implant, blue diamond, shares the same connection as a Strawman uh, BLT series. Yeah. So this design is in between of the any one and the any ridge. It's almost like a best of the both world. Okay. And it's extremely important that he put the implant as palatal as possible within the graft envelope so that when he does the grafting afterwards, um, it's going to uh, uh, regenerate the buckle bone predictably. He says the initial stability is very, very good right now. So what did he just write do? He pushed the palatal tissue, right, to see the, what the, the tissue uh, uh, thickness is, right? So he's going to try to put at least 4 millimeter below from the height of the soft tissue. Mm -hmm. yeah, the stability is quite good. Finally, I will check the ISQ value after all implant placement. So he's going to plan to do some ISQ value yeah, once all the implant is placed. Central incisor and this is lateral incisor here. This is K9. So he's eyeballing the K9 position. It's quite interesting. Like yesterday's surgery, he did everything guided. Now it's the other extreme today. <laughs> Totally not doing any guided or any digital at all, right? He's doing 100% eyeballing. That tells you how versatile of a surgeon Dr. Uh, Yongjin Kim is. Again, okay. he's using a Lindemann drill. Oh, okay. So he's just trying to parallel it, yeah. Again, you gotta be very careful using a Lindemann drill. It's a very aggressive side cutting drill. I do not recommend this type of a drill for beginner doctors. Okay, now he's going right with the dance upper again. He's doing counterclockwise or clockwise? He's doing counterclockwise, I think. So he's going to the next implant. 3.3 and this is a 3.3. 3.3 diameter dense burr. And I think he's going to reverse again due to the poor quality of the bone. It's funny, like these uh, dense burrs, they have a sleeve. Uh, sleeve holding uh, the plastic peaks but he's not using a stopper right he has the holder on it but not not the stoppers he's using a 30 millimeter length blue diamond 4.1 by 13 hey Scott how you doing Good stability. It's got a lot of thread exposed on the buckle, but that's okay. You can regrow all that buck missing buckle plate as long as the implant is approximated to pallet. There you go. That's a. Th gotta be careful not to damage the implant. Now where is he going to put that one? That's a three, is a four? He's going to put one in between, is he? Just removing some of the soft tissue tag. Now he's using a different type of uh, elevator, right? That's either a Boozer or George. Smaller elevator. Mm. Just give me a little more local anesthetic. 
because soon he'll be doing a periosteal release. Just numb up, numb up the patient. Then I will place one more implant in pass premolar. This is the final trip for Densabo. Densabo is a final trip to use the back of 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 the Now he's doing a counterclock. The one, the previous uh, drill, initial drill was the clockwise, now we're doing counterclockwise. Three point three is going in a reverse. This is very rare, cause for a bone to be that soft, and he has to do a counterclock from a get go. That means bone quality is pretty bad. So what he's doing is uh, he's also densifying, but he's also expanding a little bit. Okay, I can see a bit of a bone expansion going on right there. Considering this distance between post premolar implant and post molar implant. The remaining distance is that's enough to place one more implant, so what? I will skip this implant placement. Mm -hmm. okay. So he was eyeballing, and he was originally planning to do two premolar, because that previous implant is on the first molar position. He says instead of doing two premolar, he's just going to put a one. A so he had to do a little bit of a treatment plan change. See, this is a truly a brain, a total brain added surgery, right? Because he didn't do any digital planning for this case at all. Like me, if I'm doing a free-handed, I still do digital wax up and everything. Because I, I don't like to make a mid-course uh, treatment change in the middle of it. But you know, sometimes you have to, right? Mm, okay, that was a good question. Some of the doctors were asking why didn't you use guided surgery and not proper digital planning? Well, this is a thing, right? His answer is this. He says, this gentleman did not use removable denture during the healing time. He just could not tolerate it. So his bite is very unstable and they don't know what the bite is, what the reproducible bite is. Uh, therefore, that's why he couldn't get the guide going um, to get the, um, uh, because you know, full large cases like this, right? Okay, You need a guide with an anchor pin but in order to put that accurately, you gotta get the proper bite and have the patient down, clench down, and to put those three or four anchor pins. So he couldn't do that. So that was one of the reasons. And then how he's gonna get the right um, bite then? What he's hoping to do is that during the healing time with the transitional uh, removable, hope to find or reestablish proper occlusion and from which they can hope to properly design the, the, the the, the teeth and the vertical dimension of the occlusion. So what he's saying is that prosthetic is going to be the prosthetic phase is actually going to be harder than the surgical phase. For this patient, the digital guide, digital guide implant surgery Hi, Tam. was quite Hi, Hallie. challenging because of severe COCR discrepancy. Mm -hmm. This patient didn't have didn't have any any removable partial denture in upper jaw so mm -hmm. remaining case has severe mobility so mm -hmm. also as a result this patient was presenting class 3 mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. occlusal tendency so, so tendency is pseudo class 3 so they don't want to build a bite in his existing bite 
That's a pseudo. That means his job has a, a strong possibility that he we can reestablish a proper class one. Byte registration was quite challenging, so mm -hmm. I could not use digital guide implant surgery for mm -hmm. this patient. So all these implants are slightly countersunk, as you can see. 87. <laughs> What's wrong? It was 87, so the machine is not working well. Again, like, do you really need to do an ISQ reading uh, after you place an implant? Uh, I don't. I don't. I only uh, just measure the initial torque value, but I do re do the ISQ reading before I do the final restoration. The center incisor, um, ISQ value was 75 and 75. So, as a guideline, anything Inside. over 70, 75 is considered good initial ISQ value. And you do want to measure it in a, at least a two different area. K9 is same as 75. 75, that's pretty good. And post primola. Eighty-three. Initial stability and ISQ value is quite good. It's rarely to have a really low ISQ value when you have a really good uh, initial torque value. Place and cover screw. So all his implants are palatally biasly positioned. That leaves the exposed thread on the buckle still within graft envelope. If you did not put the implant palatal enough, if the implant is buccally placed, doesn't matter how much bone grafting uh, that you do, it's just not going to regenerate bone, not predictably. So position of the implant is going to dictate the likelihood of the success of the buccal GVR. Okay, just placing slightly more deeper. Especially when you do combining implant and a GBR like this, this situation, you, you rather be deeper than shallow. So before performing the GBR, I will do periosteal releasing incision first. So he's going to do a periosteal release first before he does the GBR. For tension free primary closure, I will cut the periosteum here. Yeah, so he's cutting the periosteum, he says. Bit. Extremely important aspect of a GBR, any GBR. If you don't achieve tension free closure, might as well just, you know, just give up because it's not going to work. Okay. The risk of the losing of the graft. Number one reason why people lose graft or GBR doesn't work for beginners is inability to achieve tension free closure. Number one reason why beginners fail their GBR cases. Whether it's a sausage, whether it is a veneer grafting, or whether it's, you know. Yeah. So in order to get that out of the way, he's going to do a perios release. Why is he giving more freezing here? Not necessarily because the patient is in pain, to reduce the, the, the hemorrhage. Because as soon as you release the periosteal, that's where the lot of blood vessel is, it's going to bleed a lot. So, 
Now I'm doing G GR2 GPR. Okay. With this is a bovine bone. So what you notice is that he didn't release all the way to the distal because distal area he he's not going to do that much GBR, right? It's mainly where the buckle threads are. So he released didn't need to release that much. For example, if he were to do a sausage all throughout the fore implant, he's gonna have to release a lot more and even maybe a distal vertical. But in this case, he didn't really need to do that much of a, of a release. This is a Megos bovine plus, low temperature treated bovine bone. It's a bovine, means it's a cow bone. Oh, so patient is in a little bit of discomfort. What would have been easier for me would be a, a sticky bone. Um, this is 0 0.5 gram. The volume is around 1.0 cc. 1.0 cc volume ah. of the of the vial that he's uh, using. Okay. Well, depending on who you talk to, Dr. Ham, uh, I heard that in Korea, uh, the, the pig bone is, uh, is very popular as well. I'm not a big fan of a bovine bone. They just don't resorb quick enough for me. But you know, bone graft material is, is one of those things, you know, people have their own bone that they prefer. I will use this O6 Plus long lasting reservable yeah. collagen membrane. So he's using O6 Plus. The reception period of this O6 Plus is around 6 months, 6 to 8 months. So okay, he's using a collagen membrane. It is a, a specially treated collagen membrane is one of the longest lasting collagen membrane that's on the market and they claim it to be six months duration of lasting. Now you gotta take it with a bit of a grain of the salt here. Six months in a vitro study, okay? That means under the soft tissue. If this membrane gets exposed, it's not gonna last six months. You'll be lucky if it lasts three weeks. So. Whenever using a collagen membrane, you want to to minimize the oral exposure. Right? So the key to success for this remaining procedure, in my opinion, is going to be primary closure. Primary closure. Yeah. He's not taking it down. Uh, he's not stabilizing. With uh, any additional, he's just tucking it in. So he's using it more for a barrier. So, very important for a suture. Always want to close the corner. Now he is using a PTFV suture. And Uh, the question is, why is he using such a long-lasting membrane? Only because xenograft? No, I think that's what he prefers to use. Would it make any difference if he were to use a six-week lasting collagen membrane opposed to six months? I don't think that makes much difference at all. Um, I've never had to use this type of a brand of collagen membrane.
you know, a lot, lot of people, again, some surgeons uh, gravitate towards, you know, one particular brand. If you're getting good result with one type of uh, membrane, then you'll probably stick with it. And you get a, a quite a price break, discount rate when you buy a lot in volume. So you, you buy a lot of one thing, right? <laughs> uh, that's a great question, Tan. Okay, great question. Um, I was going to go on 9 p.m. today, but my wife made me pick up my son from swimming pool, so uh, it had to be delayed. Um, the, 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 my real answer is, Tan, I don't know when I'll be going live. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so stay tuned <laughs> okay so that's the problem with these sutures right these sutures PTFE sometimes they come undone right sometimes they come undone um, that's why, like Dr. Bernard Jin, he prefers to use a monofilament, like a nylon suture. Um, the problem with the nylon suture is that they don't come undone, but they're prickly. They, they, it bothers people's cheek. It's not soft uh, 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 suture. So I use a PTFE, like Dr. Kim right here. I will be using a 5.0 suture, uh, PTFE monofilament. But you want to do extra ties. You want an extra tie. So here he's doing a one tie, two tie. He does a three tie. I do one more. I would personally do one more because they do come undone uh, more frequent than the rather others. And you want to leave the, the tail a little longer. I find that helpful. Yeah. So he's doing his best to get a primary closure. Very clean technique, right? You see that? A good surgeon from a mediocre surgeon, whenever you're doing surgery, your amount of the bite that you take from the buccal and the lingual should be almost equal, almost equal. Why is this is important? So that when they tie it up, it has a higher chance to do eversion suture, okay? Eversion suture like horizontal mattress. Uh, so that is a very good technique that you should learn from uh, this yes, presentation so today. These were simple interrupted. Okay, interesting. So he's doing the horizontal mattress near the end, not at the beginning. Like how I do it is I'll do the corners with the double loop uh, independent sutures and then I will start to do a horizontal mattress right internal horizontal mattress to get an inversion I'll do a couple spots and then I'll finish off with uh, independent uh, uh, uninterrupted suture but in his case he's uh, doing the other way he get hit the corners and the mid parts uh, independent interrupt non interrupted suture and then he's finishing off with internal uh, horizontal uh, mattress so, you know, whatever works, right? Yeah. Over the membrane. Hey, Young Ho, how you doing? Thanks for joining again. Yeah. Type of suture that he's using, I think it's a 5 volt PTFE, but he's a needle. Needle uh, shape, it is a three, uh, three eight, three eight suture, not a half circle. Uh, one of the main reasons we use three eight is so that you can enter the one side of the tissue and come out the other side of the other tissue. So it saves time. You can reach a little further.
So he's doing the uh, internal mattress, internal horizontal mattress. And he's going to see that he's, he's, he's trying to aim the equal amount, right? So what these sutures are doing is not really to close the top part, right? Okay. Uh, what it's doing is the, the vector force is going to be, you know, give a little bit of a inversion, slight inversion to happen. Um, because if you have epithelial layer to epithelial layer, okay, it's going to heal by secondary intention. It's going to have an ingrowth, right? You don't want that, right? The fastest way for two tissue to merge together and join is by having the connective tissue part, the inside part, to touch together. Okay, when you do that, those tissue is going to join together very, very rapidly. Does it look like a 4.0? Maybe your eyes are better than mine. Now I'm making one more simple interrupt suture. So he's going to add a little more. So he's going to do another internal mat horizontal mattress. It did, this is just a variation of a double loops, aren't they, right? Double loops. You can see the evapting yeah. of incision line by making horizontal matrix suture. Yeah. Yeah. Always do at least a few horizontal internal you mattress whenever you're doing case. any GBR After procedure GBR. where you need to have a tension free, tension -free uh, a flap closure. 예, 항상 제가 주로 많이 쓰는 GBR 이후의 수첩 테크닉이 되겠습니다. 어, 화려한 수첩 테크닉도 좋겠지만 네, 가장 기본에 충실하는 게 좋을 것 같고 호리존탈 mm -hmm. 매트리스 수처랑 심플 인터럽티스 수처 두 가지만 충분히 하실 수 있다면 He says uh, this is how he does almost all of his uh, GBR closures. Uh, nothing fancy. Uh, the objective's always been to uh, minimize the flap opening. Okay, minimize the flap opening. And you know, just you know, paying attention to the fundamental skill, right? Fundamental technique, which is single interrupted and horizontal internal mattress. And uh, he's adding uh, a few more on top of the horizontal, just to close that up. Yeah, now he's going to close the vertical lines. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's all planning. Yeah, it's all planning. Yeah, it's a very meticulous surgeon. Okay. Never want to rush the, the suturing phase. I've seen so many, you know, good surgery gets ruined by sloppy suture at the end. There you go. Looks very nice. Just adding a few more. Okay. 
climb all across our zone. Looks really and good. I will take panorama and CBCT and after that, let's have a Q&A session. Okay, good job. Good job. Excellent. Any questions so far, guys? Okay. Hey, Lisa. Okay. Oh, he's back. 지금 환자분 CT 촬영 중인데 전치부에 그 환자 전치부 치아가 없기 때문에 이제 바이트 플레이트를 잘못 물어서 CT 영상 그 파노라마 영상이 좋지 않아서 다시 촬영 중이어서. Q&A okay, so he Q&A says that uh, he says that uh, they're trying to take uh, uh, X-ray, but because uh, he doesn't have any teeth, uh, his he couldn't stabilize his a um, uh, uh, jaw position to take the X-ray properly. So they're doing a retake. So he's going to start the Q&A. Uh, so the question or the first question was uh, one of the surgeon uh, recognized that he was using a dance bar with a guide holder the peak one but he wasn't using the sleeve any reason behind that Mm. So what the, what he says is that um, he kept some of the drill with the, uh, the the sleeve holder on because original uh, treatment plan was to place two premolars, the two four and two five. Even though, of course, he had to to uh, abort the two five case because uh, due to the lack of space there. But on the two five area where he initially was planning, had a bit of a low sinus, and he was going to put the the stoppers on there to do a sinus bumping. Uh, that's why he ha- had the uh, his assistant put the uh, um, the holder um, uh, before the surgery, but he didn't really get to use that. Yeah, because he's trying to put the holders in the middle of the surgery is pretty tight. It's hard to put it on. So a lot of times he just uh, puts uh, those holders on beforehand to save time. Yeah, she's saying that uh, he originally he was supposed to put a four implant, but he didn't get to put the fourth one because due to the lack of space. And the reason why he he used the uh, uh, the, the membrane and the bone is that uh, uh, for him, meeting the volume was more important than the speed of integrating of those uh, graft materials. So he chose the xenograft and the long-lasting membrane. And uh, due to the time uh, limitation. Uh, Due to the time limitation, uh, he's going to uh, omit the uh, omit the, uh, the the X-ray and the CBCT uh, because he was under the time strain. Uh, so a lot of these uh, live surgery cases, like I mentioned to yesterday, is that you know these guys are under a lot of time constraint. So uh, um, you know, but it was a great uh, surgery. I think uh, you know you guys uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. And um, yeah, uh, one of the things that I was uh, very impressed with uh, Dr. Kim's surgery was that today uh, he showcased something totally different than what he showcased yesterday. Yesterday was all about planning, all about digital guide, digital planning, and prefabricate CAD CAM pre milled the zirconia abutment, and placing a, a four unit of temporary bridge, which is a total different. Uh, way of uh, thought process with digital and today it was a totally other extreme which is all freehand all eyeballing and he had to make some key uh, decision 
uh, in the middle of it, right? And that was uh, during the middle of the live surgery as well. So you know, the man has uh, man has balls, man, right? Okay, and uh, he's a very very uh, good surgeon, and I was very uh, impressed with how meticulous he is with the incision and full thickness flap, and cleaning all that area and uh, positioning the implant with the uh, palatal approximation to allow for the buccal thread exposed where he know he's gonna have to graft, right? Okay. Um, always the grafting should not be decided whether you're gonna graft or not in the middle of the surgery. Some of the beginner surgeons I find like when they do the surgery, oops, my implant is too buccal. The thread is exposed, I'm gonna do grafting. Those grafts don't work because implant position is not. You're using a grafting in order to bail you out bail you out uh, of the of the thread exposure due to the wrong positioning. Those cases never work out, right? Okay. Um, every time you want to have a successful grafting together with implant placement, my recommendation is plan your position of the implant properly first and um, you know commit to grafting as part of the treatment plan. Okay. Yeah, just like what he did, right? So hope you guys had a good time. Okay. Uh, tomorrow, when will I be? Uh, when will I be going on tomorrow's a live event? I'm gonna try to aim for tomorrow morning, uh, opposed to tomorrow evening, because yesterday when I did a live uh, uh, a show, a lot of doctors from a different time zone was able to join in, right? So, uh, so I want to be as fair as possible. So tomorrow morning, probably anywhere from eight or nine o'clock before my kids get up. So uh, I'll try to uh, I'll do that. Hope you guys have a great time, and then you know, take care. See you soon. All right. See you soon. <laughs> See you soon. See you soon. Uh, yeah. Okay. Happy holidays once again. Stay healthy. Be happy. See you tomorrow. Bye bye.